Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at half wave rectifier with RL load. So let's get started. So we had seen R load separately and L load separately in our previous two videos, isn't it? So this is basically a combination of whatever we have studied till now. So let us consider the supply Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. Now, in order to understand this in a much better way, let us consider what happens during positive half cycle. So Vs is basically positive, that is plus and minus. Whenever plus is connected to the anode of the diode and negative is connected to the cathode of the diode, the diode will be forward biased and acts as short circuit, isn't it? So the current starts flowing through this path, the current flows through this path, and the current flows through the load. So let us call this current as I out. Now there will be some amount of voltage that is appearing at this point. This is basically the V out, overall output voltage available across the load. Now, whenever the current is flowing, the inductor will start charging with a polarity plus and minus. Remember this point, because the supply voltage is positive, the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus. Now we need to make an assumption. Let us say we are supplying 10 volt and we choose the resistor value such that so whatever 10 volt is supplied at some point in time that should be available at the load terminals isn't it because there is no other elements between them so diode is short circuited in the sense whatever is applied should appear across this point so let us say in the 10 volt that we are supplying 2 volt is dropped across the resistive load and remaining 8 volt is available across the inductor so the inductor slowly starts charging and reaches a maximum value of 8 volt remember this point because this is very important for our analysis. Now, what happens during negative half cycle? During negative half cycle, what will happen? The supply will be negative in this particular fashion. So if you are considering negative half cycle, the sine wave will be like this, isn't it? During negative half cycle, if you are considering this portion, so this is the maximum value. 10 volt is what we had considered. That means this is minus 10. So this is then this point, if we consider this point, then it will be minus 3 volt, around minus 3 volt. Just assumption. So whenever the supply is minus 3 volt, in this case now we are assuming, and this minus 3 volt will appear at this point. Now, according to the property of inductor, we know that it does not allow sudden change in current, so it will reverse its polarity as minus and plus and ensures that the current still flows in the same direction that it was previously flowing. So current flows through this path. So I out is the current. So previously I had mentioned it had charged till a maximum voltage of 8 volt. So let us say this 8 volt is available at this point. Minus 8 volt. Minus 3 volt is obviously greater than minus 8 volt, isn't it? So that means anode is having higher polarity compared to cathode. And that is why diode is forward biased and acts as short circuit. So the current keeps flowing through this path and current flows through this path and it keeps circulating up to some point. What is that point? Let us say we had considered the supply to be minus 3 volt but it keeps changing and at some point it will reach minus 10 volt, isn't it? The maximum value. Now let us say the supply has reached a maximum value of minus 10 volt and the inductor has discharged its voltage. Okay? So the inductor has discharged its voltage and minus 10 volt is the maximum value or it is still discharging even if you assume it is still discharging it, it has an energy of about minus 3 volt for example minus and plus. So now in this case minus 10 volt is available here and minus 3 volt is available here. In this case anode is lesser than cathode potential and diode is reverse biased and acts as open circuit. So that is why there will be no flow of current through this path and the current does not flow in this case. So case 1 in negative half cycle is that current will still be flowing in the negative direction. Beyond some point, the current will not flow. That is what I am trying to say. I hope this point is clear. Now why is this point important? Because in waveforms, it is very very important for us. Now let us try to plot the waveforms. We are considering a sinusoidal supply voltage. Now what happens to the output current? So for L load, we had seen previously that the 
current was maximum at omega t is equal to pi isn't it whenever omega t was equal to pi the current was maximum and in case of r load we had seen that the current was basically following the supply so i out was actually following the supply voltage waveform so now we have to basically combine these two properties together so what will happen in the waveform is we had seen that the current in the inductor was slowly charging up to some point and beyond that point the current starts discharging in this particular fashion and then becomes equal to zero and again in the next cycle starts charging so if you carefully observe if you extrapolate this this is the pi by 2 this is pi so the current will be reaching its maximum value from pi by 2 to pi in this case previously it was pi but now since we have r and l together combined the current will reach its maximum value between pi by 2 and pi very very important point and then it discharges and the cycle repeats so we had during the negative half cycle the current still flowing till some point isn't it during negative half cycle if you carefully observe we still have the current flowing and the inductor is basically discharging and in our second case in negative half cycle we saw that the current will not flow because the diode acts as open circuit and that is where the current is going zero i hope this waveform is very clear to you because these are very confusing concepts you have to be uh, focusing towards the objective in this case so if you carefully observe this the point at which the current decays to zero over here is basically called as beta so what is beta beta is basically the extension angle the point in which the output current decays to zero is called as beta and it is called as extension angle now what happens to the output voltage the output voltage during positive half cycle will follow the supply so whatever was being supplied will appear across the load terminals is what i told isn't it so it will basically follow the supply during negative half cycle the current was still flowing till some point isn't it till that point it will still be conducting the diode was still conducting isn't it so that is why it will still keep following up to some point and once the current decays to zero at say equal to beta what will happen the voltage will become equal to zero because diode is open circuited at this point isn't it now consequently what will happen it will be zero again in the next half cycle the voltage will basically follow the supply voltage waveform i hope this point is clear so this is how you need to analyze the waveform for rl load now we will be looking at some important parameters that is average output voltage which is given by the expression we have v out is equal to 1 by 2 pi into 0 to beta integration now why do we have beta beta is the point where the output voltage is becoming equal to 0 so this is the maximum value isn't it so that is why we are considering beta here so vm sin omega t into t omega t now v out is equal to vm by 2 pi can we write like this and then sin omega t integration is basically minus cos omega t with the limits 0 to beta so can we further simplify this as vm by 2 pi into minus of cos beta minus cos 0 is basically 1 isn't it so we can write v out to be equal to vm by 2 pi into 1 minus cos beta so this is the expression for average value of output voltage so if they ask you to find the value of v out they should be giving you beta or vice versa they may give the value of v out and ask you to find the value of beta now what is the average output current average output current is given by a simple formula i out is equal to v out by r according to ohm's law isn't it so v out is basically the value that we have found previously so you have vm by 2 pi r into 1 minus cos beta this is the value of average output current so what is peak inverse voltage peak inverse voltage for rl load is similar to that of r load and we have vm why is that equal to vm so during negative half cycle so we had 
the diode being reversed bias at some point in time, isn't it? In that case, the maximum supplied voltage, that is voltage across the diode was minus Vm sin omega t, isn't it? So we have to only consider the magnitude of this. So the peak inverse voltage is the maximum voltage that is available across the diode during reverse bias condition. So this is the magnitude of the voltage that is available. So we are considering PIV, the magnitude is basically Vm. I hope in this video you were able to understand half wave rectifier with RL load. In case you have any questions with respect to this video, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.